Hey folks, if you're in the southeast, I stock Sinclair ground mount parts here in North Georgia, and I can ship them all over anywhere in the United States. So please don't hesitate to contact me through this channel, and I can order your ground mount for you and get you all the parts for your solar installation. Thanks for watching. Two things I do want to point out in the beginning, though, is a lot of time people want their ground mount in a certain area if it's a residential job. On this one, she wanted it right up against the house. Just like we've put it. I tried to put it all over the place. This lady wanted it right where it sits. So that's where we put it. Other thing I want to point out is if you're on a hill, make sure that you figure out where the lowest part of the panels are going to be. So where that leading edge of the panel is closest to the ground, you do not want to be in the dirt. You want to make sure you're still 18 inches, 24 inches up off the ground. If it's seasonal adjust, you need even more height. So Really focus on where that first lowest panel is going to be. You do not want to be in the dirt. Hey folks, it's Johnny Valentine with Gain Solar. We're doing a Sinclair ground mount. This is a good old-fashioned concrete ground mount. We couldn't get my machine in here. Couldn't get the skid steer in here. So we're digging holes. And I'm going to show you guys just kind of the basics of digging holes and concreting in your posts. Uh, when you don't have a level site, this is not a level site. Antonio says, tell everybody it's back to old school. So you can see, you never can see the drop in grade on a video, but that's it. <laughs> Boom. So it's not as bad as it comes away from the house. But when you have a situation like this and you have a bunch of finished concrete oh. curbing and all kinds of stuff like that. What? Stop again? got concrete all around it's a lot going on in this project so we're having to concrete these posts in probably going to get a georgia buggy uh, or a tracked concrete buggy to bring in here and we're doing a sinclair ground mount the first thing you got to do is make your hole we chose to drill these holes uh, a lot of different ways to do it luckily this is where they were washing out there you can see some chunks this is where they washed out all the concrete when they built this house. So that was fun dealing with all that. This is a two foot diameter. Uh, post embedment on this job was 60 inches. We went a little deeper, but we've got a two foot diameter hole. And there's the other one right there. So we're gonna have 12 panels on two posts. And the beautiful thing about the Sinclair is you only have two posts. Things are gonna need a rotary laser or if you want a string line, if you trust it, and you're just going for two posts, maybe a string line and a level. We've got lots of different levels, magnetic levels, uh, post level, handy, regular level, hammer, impact driver, various shovels. Um, what else do you need? Oh, these concrete stakes. So these are concrete stakes. I don't know if you can see this, but they got holes in them. So you drive them into the ground and then you can screw right through them. And that's how you can set this post. So this first post, we've set it totally level. Once we get the post totally level, we're gonna set the laser. Then I find out where the laser is hitting this. So the laser's hitting this one right here. At, uh, I think it was hitting it at like 34 and three quarters down from the top of the head. So now if I know the laser's hitting this post at 34 and three quarters, I go over here to this post, measure down 34 and three quarters. Then I measure on the post where the laser's hitting it, take the difference and cut it off the bottom of the post. And that puts that post level. And so you have a little wiggle room. You put gravel in the bottom of your hole and what that allows you to do is if you need to pick the post up, if there's gravel down there, when you pick the post up, the gravel kind of fills in underneath and the post has something to sit on. Instead of in dirt, it'll just sink right down. So here's my level mark at 34 and three quarters. So once I know that, I come over to this post not drop my tape measure in oh dropped it in so then I make my next mark at 34 and 3 quarters 
find out where the laser's hitting. If the laser's hitting right. Right there. So what that tells us is that the difference between here and here, we cut off of the post, and that'll give us a level level post. And if, if, if it's a little short or something, we add gravel. So by far the easiest way to cut these is with like a, I think, is that a four inch bandsaw? I don't know what that is. I don't know. This is this is a straight up classic oh. Milwaukee bandsaw with a five inch mm -hmm. cutting capacity and a metal cutting blade. Definitely the easiest way. Grinder works so. Make sure you cut the bottom piece off. The top piece has lots of holes in it. Bottom piece doesn't. And another little part you always want to remember is if you face the flat part of the post towards the east, you get the even 10, 20, 30 degree tilts for the array. If you face the flat, far, flat, flat face west, you get the odd. And sometimes you gotta take a little bit off your holes. Now I love when a DIYer argues with me about how he's gonna build it out of Unistrut with Sackcrete. This is how these things are engineered. There's a drawing right there showing you where they call out the concrete footer. So people freak out when they see what a big hole we do and how much concrete we put in, but you're basically building a sail. You wanna engineer this thing for worst case scenario. Follow the drawing, guys. All right, folks, while we're sitting here waiting on concrete, it's a good time to talk about concrete. So this is a Georgia buggy behind me. This is gonna allow me to access these uh, this, these two holes. It's on the kind of steep. It's just hard to get in there. I don't wanna use a wheelbarrow. I don't wanna risk messing up or spilling a bunch of concrete. So we have two holes. One of the holes is, it's right at 60 inches deep, which is five feet, but it's a little wide. And the other hole is uh, a good bit deeper than 60 inches. Uh, so, uh, in order to calculate how much concrete you need, there's a number of online calculators, but you're, uh, you're just going to go and calculate the volume of a cylinder, and there's all these concrete calculators that will tell you how many yards you need. Always order a little more than you need, and, um, you know, you can let them dump it somewhere or wash out somewhere, you know. They can figure that out. Uh, this Georgia buggy is really going to help though. And then the, the type of concrete this job's calling for, it's calling for 4,000 PSI at 28 days, 4% slope. And it's real cold today, so I'm going to get some non corrosive accelerant so that it sets up quicker. So, ordering concrete, you just call the uh, ready mix place. Like I just Googled ready mix concrete all around me. Uh, some of the places are concrete plants, and that's who I'm dealing with. They're going to be bringing the concrete directly to me. Other places you might get a place where it's like a, they just have trucks and the trucks go and deal with the concrete plant, but you might call around and get prices, make sure you schedule it in advance, um, or you might not be able to get it the exact day you want it. Anything else I can tell you about concrete? It's heavy. This is, uh, each one of these, these uh, holes is gonna have over 2,500 pounds worth of concrete in it. So uh, do not, do it with bags if you can help it at all. That's the only part of this hard ground mount that I'm not doing the hard way is I'm not doing bags. No, sir. No, sir. I won't do it. I will not do it. I won't mix concrete bags. I won't do it. So I'm driving the buggy and I got to get all the way across here past all these homeowners. I do not want to spill concrete. That is my goal. So I'm going to back in and then I'm going to turn around and try not to spill any.
lastly, have another project on deck in case you order too much concrete. Right, Antonio? <laughs> Two yards is a little too much. What's next? That's it. The concrete truck's out of here. We got all our concrete in our holes. We did just go through and check, make sure everything's still relatively where it was, and it is. It's right there, dead on still, and lots of concrete in the hole. So two yards was way more than I needed, which is evident by this impromptu, what do you call this? Impromptu hardscape. Just set up some forms. Did this. She had us throw it down. I wanted to send it back to the plant, but now we're doing a little concrete finishing project. All right, guys, so let your posts harden, and then it's time to build the rack. Very easy to build this rack. You've got two bolts right there, one that sets the tilt, and the other one that just kind of bears the weight. So we always hang this truss. Hang the truss with that bolt, and then you're going to select your tilts. Remember... Flat face faces east. Those are your even tilts. Flat face faces west for seasonal adjust and odd number tilts. So it goes, I believe it goes 40, 30, 20. And then um, once you get, get <clears throat> you want to get your array as square as possible. So if you look down this edge, these should all be relatively in line with each other. You can always trim them, provided that your rails are long enough. Uh, but if you get it square enough, you don't have to trim. So I suggest not tightening everything up so that you can kind of push it one way or another until it's square. And uh, squaring it up, making sure everything's level really helps. If you do screw up and one post is higher than the other or something like that, Remember, you've got all these holes to adjust it, and every hole is slotted. Just about every place where they it mates up. If you know, if there's a regular hole on one side, it's slotted on the other part. So uh, this rack is very forgiving. So before you start hanging your panels, you want to go and tighten everything down, and then it's time to put up the panels. Folks, thank you so much for watching this video. If you're interested in purchasing a Sinclair ground mount, solar panels, solar converters, anything, if you need consulting for your solar project, please contact me through this channel. I'm happy to help you, and I would love to sell you the solar material and talk you through your project. Hope this video helps. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.